Phototourism introduced an interface for moving between photos in 3D. This approach was effective for simple facades where selecting a region of interest and zooming in is the dominant mode of interaction. For more complex scenes, such as buildings with both interior and exterior views, better controls and rendering techniques are needed. In this paper we present a system that automatically discovers good controls to guide you through a photo collection. These controls include orbits, panoramas, interesting viewpoints, and optimized transitions between views. These controls are computed automatically from the distribution of photos and help you navigate a large photo collection by guiding you through interesting aspects of the scene. At the core of our system is a novel view selection and rendering engine that selects and displays photos as a user moves through a scene. Here we use standard free viewpoint navigation controls to view the Notre Dame Cathedral. As we move, new photos automatically appear based on our current viewpoint. We can also zoom in, causing photos with higher resolution in the region of focus to be displayed. Unlike in phototourism, our system supports continuous navigation and automatically updates the rendered view. We also support controls for orbiting around objects. To render the scene while the user moves, we project the selected photo onto a 3D proxy plane. This plane depends on the type of motion the user is undergoing. We normally use a plane fit to the 3D point seen by the current image. However, for orbital motions, this can produce a jerky effect, as different planes can be selected for different images, stabilizing different parts of the scene. Instead, for orbital motions, we use a new orbit stabilization technique which stabilizes the orbit axis across all views. This produces a much smoother, more three-dimensional effect. This reconstruction of a community photo collection of the Statue of Liberty shows that the distribution of photos is very non-uniform, and that there are two distinct orbits. To help the user find these good places to orbit, we automatically detect orbits in a scene. These orbits are then shown to the user in the thumbnail pane at the bottom of the screen. Here the user first explores the outer orbit. When the user is at an orbit control, arrows appear on the sides of the screen suggesting which direction the user can orbit in. The arrows turn orange when the user is orbiting in that direction. Now the user selects the thumbnail for the inner orbit, and the system moves the camera along an automated path to that orbit. In addition to orbits, our system also detects other good places to view the scene from, including panoramas and individual canonical views which represent interesting parts of the scene photographed many times. These canonical views are automatically computed. When the user selects a canonical view, the virtual camera moves to that viewpoint. Naively interpolating the viewing parameters produces an unsatisfying transition. Instead, we use a new path planning algorithm that generates transitions which pass through intermediate photos as closely as possible. For this transition to a view taken inside the Pantheon looking towards the entrance, the system computes a path that first moves through the doorway, then turns around 180 degrees. Now the user selects several other views to see individual sculptures. The system automatically computes good paths to these views. Now the user selects a panorama. Arrows appear on the sides of the screen showing which directions the user can pan to see additional views. A user can also use path planning with a large internet photo collection to enhance their own personal collection. Here is a personal photo collection containing four photos from the Pantheon. A user can load their collection into the viewer and create a 3D slideshow, moving between the personal photos using the community photos to render good transitions. By default, our system selects photos based only on viewpoint, ignoring differences in lighting. This can cause the appearance of the scene to change dramatically as the user moves, as a variety of daytime and nighttime photos are displayed. To create a smoother experience, the user can activate an appearance stabilization mode, which only selects photos similar in appearance to the previous photo. Notice how now only daytime photos are shown. To hide changes in appearance even more, we turn on adaptive color compensation. The system now adjusts the color balance of new photos to better match that of previous photos. The color compensation fades away over time. Our viewer also allows the user to toggle between different classes of photos, such as daytime and nighttime. The user now switches to a nighttime version of the scene.
then switches back to daytime. Here we use community photos to create an object movie experience for the Venus de Milo. We first select a region of interest to focus on the sculpture. We can also use our system to easily create 3D experiences using a handheld camera. Here we take a low frame rate video moving on an unstructured path around an object and automatically transform it into an experience where the user can interactively adjust the viewpoint. When a sphere of views is available, the user can orbit in two dimensions. In this video we show the three orbits discovered by our system for the Pantheon photo collection. When 3D geometry is available, we can use it in place of our planar proxies for rendering, giving a stronger sense of realism.